Wow, the Space Games. I loved them so much when I was growing up and well, I guess it's time to go fully back into it. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing one of the most underrated space sims of this decade maybe, and it is X4 Foundations. Everyone is talking about Elite Dangerous, everyone is talking about Star Citizen, but for some reason they forgot this insanely good space game series called just simply X. And well, in this video, I'm going to be fixing that. As always, I'm not going to be wasting a lot of your time and giving you the answer right away, whether X4 is actually worth it or not. And the answer is this. This game is absolutely amazing game. And it's insanely great, insanely deep, and probably the most detailed and most deep space simulation game to the date. But it's not for everyone. And let me explain. So what is X4? So technically, X4 is, well, fourth installation fourth main installation in an x series that has been coming out for decades and x3 which was out decades ago when i was in high school was one of the first space simulation games that i got very very deep into even though i was insanely bad at it and probably didn't discover like 90 percent of what that game actually had back then but now looking back i have missed so many things in this game and thankfully with x4 i'm actually going to well fix that so what is even x games and what is x4 foundations as you may understand it's a space simulation game genre wise is exactly the same thing as elite dangerous or star citizen you're basically playing as a well individual uh, in far future and your goal is basically to live in this space world and yes it's a sandbox game you don't have have any well very particular things to do or the story missions to go through even though you do have a story to go through and you are literally free to do anything and the gameplay of this game and well an actual implementation of you can do whatever you want is in my opinion the best in in any space in genre and let me explain what do I mean by that. And I will be drawing uh, comparisons to Elite Dangerous and some comparisons with Star Citizen because despite what everyone is saying, this game is not a game yet. It's literally a tech demo. It's not out. I will be talking about this as a game when it will be playable for everyone. And we, before you're going to jump on me with the pitchforks, I pledged this game years and years ago and I was among the first who was supporting this game. So yeah, don't talk to me about Star Citizen. I'm going to be comparing the game actually came out and actually playable and actually developing and it is an Elite Dangerous. So what it's like to play an X4 and how actually world looks like and how space looks like and how it's actually compared to, well, it, again, Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is going more with realism when you have an actual star systems and you may know, star clusters and entire galaxy and everything is where it should be. The planets are rotating around the star, the satellites are rotating around the planets, the star, even the space stations are rotating around the planets. So it's very realistic. Here it's not as deep and not as well, lifelike. But don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing. It is going more with the sci-fi route, the literal Star Trek sci-fi route, than the realism route, which makes the world of this game incredibly cool. The world of this game is divided into different sectors, and sometimes sectors are divided into subsectors, and you are traveling between those sectors either through the jump gates, which is basically portals, or through accelerators, which will basically accelerate you from one sector to another. Jump gates are usually used between the star systems, while the accelerators are usually used between the planets of the same star system. For example, if you want to planet travel from Neptune sector to, well, Pluto sector, that's that's what you do. But if you want to travel from Sol sector to, well, another, Sol, another, another star system sector, you're using a jump gate. The game is primarily happening in space. You cannot land on a planet. Even though you can actually leave your ship and you're free to move and you can even spacewalk or even you can interact with different NPCs on the station, you don't have a walkable planets in this game. Even though you actually, you can actually interact with the planets. And more on this later. And you are just controlling your spaceships, uh, spaceship and moving from a sp uh, station to station run you uh, doing a different jobs and do you're doing basically exactly the same thing that you're doing it really dangerous but what's different well the different is actually how you can do this and the scope of this and let me explain based on one of my playthroughs so i started in a star system which is close to the sun i started as a human species and i was playing as a scout the first thing that i did is i went to an asteroid field and started collecting uh, some resources i collected some resources gathered some money and bought a mining ship and with elite dangerous and with every other basically game when you buy a mining ship 
You basically need to control it yourself, right? Well, on export, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to mine, you can actually hire someone else. You actually go can go on a space station and hire an actual crew who will do the job for you. I got very cheap mining ship, ordered it to go into a specific sector and mine for specific resources, which it did mine, and then it started selling it automatically and then continued to do that. And then with the collected resources, after a few runs, I bought another mining ship, then another one, then another one, then another one, until I got an entire fleet of mining ships. Then one of my mining ships was actually attacked by pirates, and then I actually decided to buy a bunch of fighter ships, hire a bunch of pilots, and attach a fighter pilots to every single mining ship. And what I actually did is protect them from pirates. Then when I got a large number of resources, a large number of money, I just got a large carrier ship and just filled it out with a bunch of fighters, large and small, and eventually I actually built a fleet. And yes, you actually can build a fleet and it can follow your commands. And what I did is I started the war with one of the factions in order to control the sector. And well, I lost. I lost my carrier, I lost a bunch of my ships, and now I'm back to mining. And now I'm basically gaining up more resources in order to get back and get control of the sector. And yes, you can do all of those things in this game. And it's simply insane. No other space games are actually allowing you to do that. Neither Elite Dangerous, nor No Man's Sky, nor Star Citizen. You cannot do such things in you know, any of those games, which you can do here. You can actually get an XL size ship, which is a huge carrier. You can outfit it with a bunch and bunch of bunch of different ships. You can actually put a bunch of the different fighter ships and you can hire hundreds of the crew members, which every single one of them are actually a real person that you can interact with. You can actually even trade them and then you can actually assign a different roles for them like for example if you assign the role of marines your ships are becoming better at fighting but if you just outfit your ship with a bunch of regular crew members your ships will be well well very well maintained and they will constantly repair your ship so it will not be easy to take down you can even build and design your space stations because the entire game's economy is actually well real economy based on supply and demand for example when you're mining a bunch of resources eventually this those resources will become abundant and the price to it will drop and it not it might not be worth it to well mine those resources eventually products built on those resources will actually start flooding the market and plummet the price on everything and it might even cause economic crisis on entire star sectors or you can even start building your own factories to create your own goods or you can even build your own shipyards to just produce the ships yourself. You can go and buy a bunch of designs of the ships, including the alien designs. There are a bunch of different alien species in this game and they control their own sectors and have their own different types of ships. You can even build and use their designs. Or alternatively, if you just don't want to do all of those things, you can just collect some money, hire some people to well, just run around with you and just be a pirate. You can do that as well in this game. Or just gain high standing with the faction, buy an amazing fighter ship for yourself, and get a police license and police the sector. You can do that as well. Or just buy a large freighter and trade the same way as you do in Elite Dangerous or every other space game. And when in Elite Dangerous you can only operate really only one ship, you can actually hire an entire fleet of freighters and just do this trading, even automatic trading, for yourself with those ships. The amount of gameplay variety this game, this game has is nothing that I've ever seen in any other game. But do you remember when I said that it's not for everyone? There are other reasons for that. First is, well, game's looks. The game does not look great. It looks pretty dated. It looks pretty old. And there is a reason for that. To, well, accommodate all of these gameplay features and this gameplay variety, you need to sacrifice something. And in this case, it was the game's looks. If you want to compare this with uh, Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous, those two games are miles, miles ahead of this game. This looks insanely dated and pretty old. Even though it does not look bad, I don't think that it looks bad because of the things that you can do here, but the animations of especially the people is very clunky and very slow. But the game, well, graphics-wise, is not something exceptional or amazing. And the second thing why it's not for everyone is its pretty deep learning curve. It's pretty steep learning curve. When you will start playing this game, you will not know what to do. You will literally have no idea what to do. And this learning curve and this chance that you need to give this game if you want to just 
uh, under if you really want to understand this game it is a turn off for a lot of people and that is the reason why not a lot not a lot of people actually enjoy this game at first you are bombarded with so many information so much information that it's simply insanely difficult for you to understand because this game does not have a gradual increase in its difficulty levels like everything is dropped on you because in this game you're not a hero you are nobody and your goal is basically become somebody don't you think that that you can go and uh, fight anyone in this game as soon as you start the game because no you cannot you're basically a just piece of flying scrap that is very easy to destroy you need to actually gain your place in the galaxy it's, it's kind of similar to kenshi to be fair it's not as unforgiving as it's in kenshi but here but it's actually pretty similar to that you actually need to earn your place in a galaxy that is the reason why not a lot of people will actually enjoy that but the ones who are willing to endure through this oh boy they're gonna find out the best space game that they've ever seen probably but what about the price? How much you're gonna pay for this pleasure of playing? So game is available on PC on Steam for the base price of $49.99 for tier 1 countries and $29.99 for tier 2 countries. And it can go as low as $19.99 for tier 1 countries and $11.99 for tier 2 countries. And right now I'm talking about only the base game. The game actually has three different expansions. Split Vendetta, Cradle of Humanity and Tides of Avarice. Then let's discuss quickly about those. What those add and do you actually need to consider buying them? Well, if you have never played X Games, don't you even think about buying those expansions. Don't you even think about that. Because what those expansions actually do, they expand the universe itself, adding new sectors, adding new jobs, and adding new ships, and adding new campaigns. That's what actually they do. And yes, game actually has a campaigns as well. Even though game is actually fully sandboxed and you can do whatever you want in any campaigns from right away, you can actually go through the story if you want. You can actually start the game and you have a structured story that you can go through. There is nothing exceptionally amazing about this story, but it's different fun to go through with the different factions and give you the understanding what each of those factions and which of those races stand for. Yes, you can actually play with an aliens as well in the campaigns. I highly suggest you to get the base game first and think about buying the expansions later. And if you ask which expansions to buy, get them all. There are only three expansions. The first three expansions are the part of the collector's edition and the last expansion which just came out is the standalone expansion. So yeah, get the base game first and then think about the expansion. Now, for those prices, is it worth it or not? Let's talk about the base price first. Well, even though for me, game is absolutely worth it for any price, I would still, not, I would not buy this game for the full price just because it's pretty old now. It, it, it came out a few years ago and few large expansions are available for this game now. So the game is very often on a sale, very often on a sale. So as the number of expansions continue, uh, the price of the base game will continue to drop. So yeah, if you see this game on the sale, get the game on a sale, 100%. Tier one tier two doesn't matter this game is absolutely worth it but again be wary of the graphics of the game this game does not look great it looks okay but not great and be wary of the very steep learning curve i highly 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 suggest you to go through the tutorials of the game the tutorials are pretty well good they're not the perfect but they're pretty good to give you a very basic understanding of the game and i highly suggest you to go through the youtube videos after that alongside you playing the game this is actually a big downside of any game when you need an additional well tutorials in order to actually understand the game but i guess for the game of this size and scope there was no other choice this is what you need to do in order to actually fully understand the game just because there are so many things in this game but when you'll understand this game when you understand how all those cogs just work and how I, how are they spinning it's not as difficult to understand you will get through it after after this first steep learning curve everything just becomes like much easier to understand and much easier to conquer if you love space games if you love elite dangerous for the gameplay not for the looks you are going to love this game. You're going to enjoy this game much, 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 much more. There's so much more things in here compared to Elite Dangerous, with only exception uh, uh, the planets, which in this game you can actually terraform the planets. And yes, you can visibly terraform the planets in a distance, even though you cannot land there. There are no landable planets in here. That's probably the only thing that Elite Dangerous is much better than this and the looks itself. Elite Dangerous looks just way, way, way better. It's, and it's pretty difficult for any game to beat how great Elite Dangerous looks.
especially in VR. Well, this should be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, have you ever heard about that X Games? And if yes, which one was the first one? For me, it was X3 Reunion, as far as I remember. And it was pretty great experience and yeah, just brings out a lot of childhood memories. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.